In this video, I chat to Jaguar at our Hack the DJ event last Friday in Milton Keynes on International Women's Day, Friday the 8th of March. I, we sat down for a half an hour chat and spoke about Radio 1, Three Counties Radio, um, interning for radio stations, um, getting the music on BBC Introducing, and working for Mixmag. I hope you enjoy this chat as, as ever. If you do, please subscribe, drop us a comment, so that's something what you do, what you got out of the video, and smash the bell, and you'll get these all the videos first. We're going to be dropping all of the interviews this week, um, so keep them peeled as they come through thick and fast. Hope you enjoy them. Cheers. Thank you for coming, and thank you for being a part of this day. Um, we've got some amazing speakers today, and. I've also I've sent all of you an email with something we're going to do later with myself and my rad. Um, so have a look in your inboxes this morning because I sent it all. It's a social media thing we're going to do with me and my rad. And because we haven't got screens, I've sent it all to you so you can look at it in your inboxes. Contents. So let's get cracking. And my first guest is Jaguar. Hey. How are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Oh, yeah, because it seems like a, we were on the radio last night, so it seems like it's been an age since I've seen you. I know, it's been, it's been a long time. <laughs> So, for those that don't know, Jackie was on uh, BBC Three Counties Radio. She's been on BBC Radio One. She's also part of Mix Mag's lab. So, and I thought we'd start by let's just talk about when you, how you started this industry, how you became a DJ, and how you got into radio. I guess. Okay. Well. So, um, yeah. I guess my journey started actually um, when I went to uni. Went to uni in Leeds. And uh, yeah, I, I just did student radio. I used to do a Friday night show called Dangerous Jag. And um, yeah, I was just playing a lot of electronic music and I kind of thought maybe I should start mixing because it just makes sense. Um, so yeah, I just did a lot of student radio and then I did an internship with BBC Radio 1 when I was 19, um, which I was not expecting after having like no radio experience. Nice. Um, I was right. Did you just did you just email them or did you bump No, it's like a I'd really recommend it actually. It's like a, a yearly internship that they do. Um, it's called Where It Begins. Oh nice. And yeah, you, they advertise it every year and um, you apply on the BBC Careers website and yeah, my, my station manager at U like everyone applied for this. But I honestly didn't think I would get it, so it was a nice surprise. That's really cool, and I, we should definitely put a link to that in our when we put these videos online. I'll put yeah, I'll find uh, it for you. Does that run? Does that run all year round, or can you fly all year round, or is it, is it a seasonal thing? For that, they sort of change the time of year it's at, but um, but it does happen once a year. And also, the BBC offer work experience at Radio One and Extra as well, which is just as and when really. You just got to sort of keep an eye out for it. So then you, so you did the internship and then how did that, where, how did you progress from that, I guess, into, into three counties now, do you? Yeah, so I uh, did the internship, felt like super inspired, super like massive radio nerd, and I was like, this, this is what I want to do. Like, I remember just, I remember being there and I think, because Fern Cotton was still on at the time, and then I remember seeing her like walking into the live lounge and I was like, oh my god, it's fun. And like, I worked on um, Annie Max show, I worked on B-Trek show, so I got to really work with some of my radio heroes, which was um, really cool. So yeah, I went back to uni and then, yeah, just applied everything I'd learned to my own radio shows, started putting on nights in Leeds, started DJing, and just kept like keeping in touch with people at uh, Radio 1 and 1 Extra, and then a job came up for BBC Introducing, and I managed to get that as like an entry-level job, um, which is a team assistant. And that was in Sheffield, so I was still living in the north and I would just get the train over and work on introducing in Sheffield. Um, and then, yeah, I moved to London about two years ago uh, to work with the BBC introducing sort of central team. And uh, yeah, I still work with them now. They uh, gave me a show on Three Counties back in October. So yeah, it's just been a real sort of growing journey. So are you, your, your show I mean, is, is a two part thing, isn't it, I'm, I'm, on Thursday evenings. Uh, so you'll be introducing first and then do your, your show from 8 to 10. Yeah, so on Three Counties, um, I with my good friend Danny Fulbrook, uh, we co-host the show together. And yeah, so 7 till 8 is a BBC introducing show, so we play music uh, all from artists from Three Counties and that's all genres. So 
I'm personally trying to make it as diverse as possible. We've had some really cool people coming through. Like last night we did an International Women's Day special. I'd really recommend you listen to that on BBC Sounds. It was good. It was good. Yeah, it was good. Thank it you. was good. <laughs> and then, yeah, our, sec our second show, excuse me, is um, just sort of a show of, like covering stuff that young people care about and uh, just playing some good music. So, like last night we had this vicar on who's, um, who's gay and he's like 31 and he was telling us about his experiences of being a young gay vicar, which was cool. So yeah, that show is just about sort of nice interviews and good music. Really. Yes, and um, from an, from an uh, introducing point of view, that's, it's a really good way of getting music on it on the, on the air and you, again, you can submit that online, can't you? Yeah, have you guys heard of BBC Introducing? Yeah, so the way we work is, I think it's like the best thing in the music industry. It's basically a platform for new artists. You go to bbc.com slash introducing and you make a profile, you can literally send your tracks straight away and wherever you're registered, like your address, it'll go to that local show. So if you guys are from here, it'll come into my inbox and we can listen to it and play it on our show. And We've got 37 shows across the UK, and the way it works is you can get support on your local radio show, and then we can forward you to Hugh Stevens at Radio 1, to Target at One Extra, to Six Music, to Radio 2, and then from that you can play our festival stages like Glastonbury, Reading and Leeds, Big Weekend. We did a Creamfields one two years ago, we went to AD as well, which we're looking at returning to. So we're, we're looking for dance music as well, so I don't think we have enough, so if you are a new producer, I'd really, really recommend that you head to introduce them. Yeah, we've, we've had some of our artists for our label have exposure on there, which is, which is great, 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 great for anybody on there, you know? Mm -hmm. And then, so then that's now, obviously, from, a, from, from introducing them, you've now just been on Radio 1 and Radio 1 Extra, which is incredible, well done. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, so that's sort of a relationship that's been blossoming. Um, I just made a documentary for Radio 1 on One Extra Stories, and it's about LGBT inclusive clubbing. Um, and yeah, that's available on BBC Sounds, and it just basically explores the need for, yeah, club nights that are centered around sort of different types of people rather than your sort of average big night. It shows the importance of having nights for you know, smaller groups, whether that's uh, LGBT and non-binary people or people of colour, and it's, there's some really compelling interviews on that, so I'd really recommend that. I enjoy making it. And then, and then there's some other activities, so Mixmag, yeah. you did the lab, how did that come about, and how do you, you know, how, what's, what's your role there, I guess? So Mixmag, that also, I didn't, it was after I did my first internship with the BBC, it was like a year later, so I was like, what am I going to do this summer, because I want to keep pushing, and yeah, I emailed a guy called Funster from Mixmag, and, um, and I was very confused because his email said Funster, but his email, when he signed off his email, he was like, my name is Jeremy, and I was like, he's an elusive man, <laughs> but um, yeah, Funster sort of, they, and Mixed Mag a great of work experience as well. They offer two week placements um, literally all year round. So uh, I'd really recommend if you're sort of interested in, yeah, the dance music media side, they're an amazing place. Did that internship, was writing for them, doing new stuff. And I think I came back to do, like, just to go to the lab, which is our weekly office party that we do on Fridays. Um, in, in the office. I just came back like six months later and they were like, do you want to work next week? And I was like, yeah, okay. So <laughs> I was meant to be at, like, at the library doing my, um, some uni project. But I decided to go back to London and uh, yeah, go back to Mixmag and from that they were really sweet and just kept giving me like, just stuff to write about and then I eventually became the weekend editor for Mixmag. So for about a year and a half I was writing all the news uh, over the weekend for mixmag.net, which was really, I learned a lot actually, because my degree was in English literature, but not journalism, so yeah. I had to learn how to write in a journalistic style, which yeah. is like very different to what I was used to. Um, and then from that, I, yeah, they, Tilly, who used to host the lab, who is just an iconic lady at Mixmag, um, she, yeah, she had a baby, so they're like, do you want to host the lab? So. I was so nervous. I mean, the first like few I've done, I just was so bad. 
don't watch them. But because I've done a lot of radio presenting, but I hadn't necessarily done a lot of TV presenting and like looking into the camera and remembering the DJ's name and you know, it was yeah. it was a lot, but um they obviously believed in me and I'm much better now. But I do that every Friday now, just introducing the DJ, which is fun. Yeah, I always find looking into the camera not looking into the camera, looking somewhere else. Yeah. I should be looking at the camera and not yeah. and you're like, shit, look at camera, look at camera and then Oh, no, I need to start again. Yeah. But you can't because it's live. Yeah, and it's live, and everyone's like this close to you, and it's really sweaty. But it's fun, you know? I do, I do love the, uh, the, the labs. Yeah, I mean, it's I good think vibes. The, I think what they've built there is incredible. Uh, I think the party vibe is hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you have some, obviously some great eyes. And then from that to you, I mean, obviously you're, from a networking point of view, you get to hang out with these artists every week, and you get to yeah. kind of progress your career, I guess. I mean, it, it literally is. It's like a dream come true. Like people, yeah. Some of the best DJs come to your office. People who love house music, techno, come along. Industry people come along. It's just, a, and you all got loads of free beer. So it's just a nice like opportunity <laughs> to meet people. I guess you're networking about music, and I think that is something I've really learned about this industry. Is like you call it networking, but you're probably already doing. Or have without resume building these relationships, which is the most important thing. Yes, I agree. Well, I, yeah, I think there's always a trifecta of kind of having good records, having a good network, mm -hmm. and socials, and that's definitely how you can progress yeah. quickly yeah. As, a, as an artist. Um, I, well, one thing I picked up is obviously you've done a lot of these internships and obviously been very valuable for you. Um, is that kind of, I guess, and that's been key for your, for your where you, how you get to these places. It's been let's go, we're going at the bottom and graft and can't climb the climb the ladder basically. Yeah, I mean, it really depends what you want to do. And I didn't even think I would, I didn't even know you could work in radio. I didn't know you could, I didn't know any of these jobs existed because they don't really tell you at school. And so you, I think by doing stuff, you sort of figure it out. And yeah, I honestly didn't think I would end up like DJing and doing radio shows as my job on a season. So I think if you have a vague interest in something, but like if it is radio you're passionate about, I really just recommend seeing what's out there and you'd be surprised at the sort of work experience you could get or even just it's so useful meeting up with people for like a tea and discussing whatever or you can shadow a lot of shows. Like it, yeah, I think it's just really a knowledge is really key whether you want to be a DJ or a journalist or whatever and, and for me just being able being curious and seeing what was out there was literally the most useful thing. And um what should I say? Uh what was I gonna say? No second two six. We'll come back to it. Oh what I was thinking was um these have the obviously you're having these little fingers in different pies and different you're on radio, you're on mix back. Yeah, have these now <coughs> helped your DJ career uh, and you get more exposure to your DJ career has that is that kind of blossomed because of these because you're involved with these good places. Yeah, absolutely. Again, it's like the people you meet are, are just, that that really helps. And I, again, like, without realizing, like doing the mix my thing, I've got so many contacts in electronic music and doing the BBC stuff, I have so many like radio contacts and that all helps. And I think it was all happening about me realizing and then something about, oh, I actually know this person or I can reach out to this person. Um, and for me, it was always radio first and then DJ and just sort of, came alongside it, because it's a different kind of DJ, but you're still sort of doing the same thing, you're still playing new music to people, and... Curating records in an order. Yeah, basically, <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I guess I guess that's obviously the, the positives, I guess I, I kind of just wanted to touch on struggles you've had, um, and kind of how you've overcome those to get to get where you're, you know, to, uh, how to get further, I guess. Yeah, sure, I think... A few struggles, like I think when I, I first when I first moved to London, which was like in 2017, you know, I just finished uni, and like that, when you finish uni, you're because you're like your hopes and dreams are like up here, and they, they still are. But <laughs> then you leave the uni, and you're like, oh my god, this is I'm a real person now. I have to fend for myself. I have to like work. I can't just wake up at 11 and hope for the best. And because I had been in Leeds that whole time and then I moved down to London, even though I had a few sort of friends and connections already, it was really daunting to sort of be in a big, big city and like be a bit of a small fish in a big pond. 
So I was just I was just really overwhelmed, but I was also still really driven. So I think I sort of first yeah, year and a half of being in London, I was just, I did everything. I went out for dinner with managers, I went to events constantly, I was always out, but like with the intention of just grafting. Getting amongst it. Yeah, severely. And like, I always do this thing where I'll just work really hard for like six months, have a minor breakdown, cry, <laughs> cry to my mum, and then I'm okay again. But I think, yeah, just being aware that you can burn yourself up so easily. Like, I think we're all probably for all creatives, it's so easy just to do a hundred things at once and then realise you haven't had a break in like weeks. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. I, I get that as well. Yeah. I, I do a lot, of, a lot of hours and then all of a sudden I'm sick and I'm like, oh yeah, I need to stop. I need That's to, it. I need to just stop and just yeah. <laughs> um, And yeah, another challenge I've had is it actually with my radio show, the Three Counters one, so we started that in October um, and I do it with Danny. And Danny and I had never met before, so it was sort of a decision through BBC introducing and through the editor and through counties, because they wanted to have like a, a young show on local radio. Which, too bad, there's more and more of that local radio is trying to get a bit younger, because it kind of needs to. Um, but that was, that was a big challenge initially, to sort of work with this guy I'd never met before. <laughs> I mean, you, 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 it sounds good though, you bounce off each other well. Yeah. Has that just progressed because it's been, like, when did you start that? October? Yeah, it was literally October. I think we, yeah, from the get-go, we, you know, we both love radio, we both have a lot of respect for each other, so we, and we do naturally have a good on-air relationship and on-air as well. Um, but there have been times, you know, due to creative differences, that had, especially sort of at the beginning, it was quite a challenge, and I'm very aware as well within radio, um, that, you know, so too often, you know, you look at some breakfast show, it, there's like a double-headed show and it would just be like the man's name on the radio show, or it, it happens too often. And also in that happened with Danny, like, we're super cool, but there were times where I was very aware that I wanted my voice to be heard as much as his, and it was a completely equal show. And, um, but we sort of addressed that, and then now we have a really good relationship, and I think the show is sounding really slick. It does, so it does. So yeah, I've listened to loads of times. It's, yeah, it's, it's really good. And yeah, she should definitely check it out. Um, I guess let's just. I guess my final thing would be like, what are your your biggest tips to get further in this industry? Um, from where you got, from how you are now, basically. Okay, biggest tips. Um, I, I guess. I guess from a like, obviously you you work with lots of artists. You see lots of artists, and obviously from across those two big platforms, you're you see what the other people are doing to get where they're getting, you know? So is this from an artist's perspective? Yeah, or obviously we've got quite a lot of DJs, and yeah. I, think, I, think, I think from your, obviously you're working with those two huge platforms, mm. and there's, there's obviously great advice that you will have picked up, and you're probably doing yourself, yeah. that I would like to share across, I guess. Okay, so I would say, yeah, well, I mean, for DJs and artists, like, just having that, identity like that is a hundred percent your own is really important and again that takes time like for me I think I've really sort of found what I'm about it I really probably last like, sort of year and I'm still and that always develops like we're all human beings in a year two years time we'll be sounding and doing things differently because that's natural but so I think yeah sort of coming into your own and not following a trend because it's like the cool thing to do, whether that's playing, you know, this genre or that genre. If you want to play that genre, then do that. And if you want to make that type of music, do that. But I think it's quite, you can tell, especially with DJs, when it's sort of authentic or not. And I think the ones who are unique, whether it's the club nights you play or, you know, the way you brand yourself, you can sort of separate the good from the bad. I yes, guess. yeah, and, and to do the ones that are, one of the artists, as opposed to just being DJs as well. I think there's a different separation. Yes. Yeah. An artist has a has, a, has everything about them, whereas a DJ is just putting records out. Yeah, and um, also it's, it's not a race as well. Like, I'm very aware that things take time, and you can look at so many different DJs. You know, a big inspiration of mine is Black Madonna. She is 40, 40 I think, and you know she only really is become this icon, the Black Madonna that we see in the last sort of few years. And I think, I mean, she's an amazing woman because 
she's so gracious and humble and just I think because she's been through so much like struggle and it's she's been you know she's been really patient with it and it's happened to her maybe later than she thought or whatever but I mean she's killing it yeah her story yeah she really did it was literally to the brink of I going about to give up yeah and then it then it all happened which is incredible yeah so I think being patient is really important, um, which is annoying because sometimes you just want stuff to happen like this, don't we all? But um, you have to realise that stuff doesn't happen overnight. Like, you know, I really wanted to have a BBC introducing show for years and it didn't happen overnight, but the right opportunity came along and it happened and stuff evolves constantly. But I think you've got to be patient, but also whilst you're waiting, like start working on something else, start following up on those emails for this project, you've got to be proactive at the same time. Yeah, try to have a, a ten bubbles and they go bowl at roll at the same time. You know, just <laughs> I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, and then and then this one will come to fruition whilst those ones are kind of bubbling along, and then then that one pops and it's good. And, but then the other things need to be happening along the way, you know, because that's going to stop at some point, and these other ones need to pop up next to the next, you know. Yeah, and um, yeah, I think. Um, I personally thrive of doing like loads of different things. I, everyone's different, and also want to stress that I'm a, technically I'm a freelancer. So when you're a freelancer, you kind of have to do loads yeah. of different things. <laughs> um, whether <laughs> instead of just being employed by one company, and that's sort of that's it. Um, but I sort of chose to remain freelance because you, even when I first moved to London, I was working with BBC Introducing, and that was that's very much like a production office based role. And there were jobs that came up, even even in Radio One and in radio production. But I didn't take them because, you know, I want to make my living of being a radio presenter and a DJ. So I had to make that decision to, I guess, stay freelance and stay a bit more flexible. And it can be testing sometimes financially. You know, it's all seasonal as well as in our industry. Yeah. So, um, but when you make it work freelancing, I think it's the best thing to do. You've just got to really be aware that you've got to just look three steps ahead for like the next piece of work, I guess. Cool. Um, thank you. Let's, I guess let's throw it open for a little Q&A. Yeah, sure. Um, has anyone got any questions? And please just jump in if you have. Oh. Hi. Have a go. Sure, I would say, um, I guess find a station that you would be, um, that you could see yourself at and, you know, I would just go, I would go to that station. If there's a show that you're a particular fan of, find either that presenter or that producer and, you know, as simple as asking them if you can, like, catch up for a coffee or shadow the show. Genuinely, like, even just touching base with people you've never met before is the most when you, say, so when you say shadow the show, is that literally you just get to sit in and... Yeah, a lot of the time um, people do it for the last shows, people do it for sort of the bigger Radio 1, one extra shows, and you can, yeah, obviously with their permission, it's um, a lot, even my I do a show on Represent Radio, I love even people come and shadow that sometimes, it's literally a case of, yeah, just turning up, seeing how it all works, and that's just really helpful as well, but I think just... Having an idea of what sort of radio presenter or producer you'd like to be as well is really important. So there's sort of a difference between the daytime radio presenters, so that'll be very much your Maya Jammers, your Clara Amphos, your Nick Grimshaws, sort of the... They'll play... You know, they're still music heads, but the music they'll play is very much from the playlist, and so more sort of poppy stuff. And then your specialist presenters are more your Annie Max, your Ben GBs, your... Toddler tees, targets, yeah. you know. So, ha yeah, having sort of an image of where you would sit is also really, really helpful. Next. Oh, hello. Yeah. We've, got, we've got a mic now as well. <laughs> Hi, Jennifer. Um, oh, as a young woman in the, in the music industry, um, which is largely male dominated, to touch on International Women's Day, Happy Women's Day, everyone. Um, <laughs> what obstacles have you come across? being a young woman in the industry and how have you 
without a doubt, you probably experienced levels of this. So I'm curious to, to see how you got around that. Yeah, I've, I don't think I've ever had anything super traumatic personally, but just, I mean, I guess everyday stuff is, is, it shouldn't happen, but it does being a woman, you know, even you turning up to your set and, I don't know, if the promoter hasn't been briefed as to who you are, and you, you know, and they just sort of look at you like, what you, why are you standing by this pair of decks, or, or even like, I think, I think I was at a mixed bag lab, I was just, I was just there with some people and then, talking about a DJ set I was doing, this guy was like, you're a DJ? And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, there just aren't any girl DJs. That really annoys me when people say there are no female DJs. Because there's loads, I feel like there's a lot in this room, first of all. Most of my friends seem to be female DJs, actually. And I think they do exist, it's just the exposure hasn't been really there, but I think I personally think right now we're living in a really exciting time, especially for up and coming female DJs um, or female identifying DJs because there's such an amazing new wave of talent coming through and I feel really fortunate that we have people like Black Madonna, like Peggy Goo, like Honey Dijon to look up to and feel inspired by because I certainly am. But yeah, it's just like the everyday stuff that you have to deal with. I think just it comes with being a woman, unfortunately. But I've had, um, I've had, in fact, Graham, on our, um, our radio show last night, we, I played you a clip from an interview I did with a DJ called Kia from Bristol, and she was saying, uh, she plays vinyl, and she turned up to a gig, and she was, yeah, she was putting her needles on, she was getting everything ready, and then these guys just came up to her who were punters, and they were like, oh, there's your boyfriend's records, Oh look, she's putting her needles on the turntables and just being so disgustingly belittling. Wow. Horrific. And she felt shit, she cried afterwards. Like, you can't, that's the last thing you want when you're playing a DJ set. And I think I would just say to promoters out there, whether you're male, female, or whatever, like just prioritize your DJ's safety and make sure they feel comfortable, especially if they're, you know, non-male because it's so important to, for the DJ to feel at home so they can perform to the best of their ability. Yeah, it allows them to have a creative space. Yeah, definitely. Any final questions for Jaguar? Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, guys.